a few minutes last year uh, a much more experienced North Carolina team as we are now ready for the tip of our Sonic blockbuster matchup. And not surprisingly at all, the atmosphere is great, just as it will be in Chapel Hill a month from now. Roger Ayers, Bert Smith, A.J. Desai are the officials and the Tar Heels with the opening tip. Derek Lively, the second, starting out on Armando Baycott, and you know that Carolina wants to play inside out early. Carolina coming off a one-point loss on Wednesday against Pitt. Duke coming off a two-point win Tuesday over Wake. Davis with a miss, and the long rebound out to Roach. Boy, Roach aggressively puts it up, comes up empty, and it's out of bounds to Carolina. As tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Degree. And again, a very experienced Carolina team. Davis, Love, Leaky Black, Armando Baycott, all with a ton of experience in this rivalry. And Pete Nance, a grad transfer from Northwestern. Of course, a much younger Duke team with all kinds of freshmen on the floor, along with Jeremy Roach. One on one in the post. Now, here comes the double to try to get the ball out of the hands of Baycott. Caleb Love has played two very good games in this building. 25 as a freshman, 22 as a sophomore, and Carolina won them both. They have won the last two times they've come to Cameron. And remember, he had 28 in that huge game in the Final Four and was unstoppable in the second half. A little strong for Tyrese Proctor, kicked back out by Mark Mitchell. Duke wants to move the ball from side to side, get some ball reversals, and then attack. Proctor attacks. It rolls off the back of the iron to Baycott. Already North Carolina's all-time leading rebounder, still with a bunch of games to go. R.J. Davis off the screen. Over Derek Lively. Lively got a piece, but Baycott there to clean it up. Boy, what a smart play by R.J. Davis to knock the ball. After it got blocked, he had the presence of mind to knock the ball to Baycott. And R.J. Davis has been struggling his last two. One of ten from three-point range, averaging about eight and a half points per game in his last two. Of course, took that elbow to the eye in the Syracuse game a week and a half ago. Missed a few days of practice. Roach uses the screen, and it won't go down off the window, and another rebound for Baycott. And Baycott is a one-man gang on the defensive boards. Good matchup, Love, and the freshman Tyrese Proctor. Love again. Now one for two from beyond the arc, the rebound to Roach. Caleb Love settled right there. He needs to get to the free throw line more. With his athleticism, he is a downhill driver but he's not shooting near as many free throws this year as he did last year. Carolina going under those screens. Roach with the elbow jumper and Duke on the board. And that's going to be available when North Carolina's in drop coverage on ball screens. That mid-range jump shot, especially for Jeremy Roach, is going to be a good shot. Davis frees himself up, and he knocks it down. As you mentioned, struggled his last time out, just 3 for 15 against Pitt. Hubert Davis hoping that a few more days of practice, shake the rust off, getting a little further away from the eye injury, and that R.J. Davis will be back to his normal self here tonight. Well, his normal self is one of the best guards in the country and one of the best free-throw shooters you're going to see. Derek Lively launches a three. And comes up empty. A good start here for Carolina with an early five-point lead. Baycott into the chest of Lively, who got a piece of it. Shot clock does not reset. Baycott again into the chest of Lively, and again he altered the shot. Already the game physical inside, but Lively holding his ground. One of the best shot blockers in the country. Proctor. Boy, and a couple of Blue Devils had a hand on it, but couldn't knock it down. Love, nice shovel pass. Baycott couldn't handle it. Roach for three. Baycott just couldn't grab that little pass, the drop off. But that's a good shot in transition. Years ago, you wanted to get all the way to the basket, but a pull up three in transition is a great opportunity. 
Good pace and a long stretch without a whistle here in this one. Steal by Proctor. Filipowski will lay it in to tie the game. Carolina a little too casual on that dribble handoff. Tyrese Proctor, who's a very good defender. He is long-armed and athletic and really starting to come on. Love with a crossover. Kicks it back out. Leaky Black. Pete Nance. And it'll be Carolina ball when we come back. A frenetic pace, Jay, to start this one between Carolina and Duke. Just what we expected. A physical contest where the glass is going to be the key. But Caleb Love, just a little step back three from deep. And then a fantastic play by R.J. Davis to tip the ball after the block shot. And then Jeremy Roach, he is really starting to come on for Duke, and they need him to be the man in this one. Fun fact, people will still be impressed when you surprise them with a treat from McDonald's, even when you got it for free using reward points. Because no one has to know you got it for free. Earn free food with the app. No matter what type of severe asthma you have, Tespire can help you have fewer asthma attacks and breathe better. Tespire is an add-on treatment for people 12 and older. It is not a rescue medication. Don't take Tespire if you're allergic to it. Allergic reactions like rash or an eye allergy can happen. Don't stop your asthma treatments unless your doctor tells you to. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection or your asthma worsens. Sore throat, joint, and back pain may occur. Avoid live vaccines. No matter who you are, ask your asthma specialist about Tespire today. Is it me or does everyone auditioning for this health insurance commercial look the same? It's not you. Health insurance companies see us all the same. Well, that's not good. Well, except Humana. They see me. After my back surgery, Humana sent a home health nurse for five days, helped me get set up, showed me how to manage my meds, even sent me a week's worth of healthy frozen meals. Get out. Good idea. Better care begins with listening. Humana, a more human way to health care. Sadie? You came in after work. It's the only time you can. Savory steak and bacon, grilled cheese. Sounds like a great plan. Wow, kids online are really mean. Sonic steak and bacon, grilled cheese. Mm, Sonic. What's up, Einstein? My network went into a black hole. Switch to Verizon and get a new iPhone 14 Pro and Apple Watch on them. Yep, right now get iPhone 14 Pro and Apple Watch SE on us. That's a value of up to $1,200. Verizon. Smile Direct Club. Smile Direct Club is a great way to straighten your teeth at home. They help you get the results that you want. My own son is actually a Smile Direct Club patient. I would highly recommend it. Start your doctor-directed care at SmileDirectClub.com. The rush to the playoffs. The biggest games on the biggest stage. And scores! An outdoor spectacle. The most intense playoffs in sports. Get ready for the rush. That is hockey. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. This is the Blue Devils lair here deep uh, below ground level, a few levels down here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. You ever been down there? I have not been down there. I, I have not done much mascot work in my career. <laughs> Although you have been in several lairs before, I believe, in your time. But uh, he's got all kinds of different signs and sayings. And obviously, when Carolina comes to town more than any other program, uh, they're going to hear it from the fans here at Cameron. Two unranked teams. They were both unranked in both games two years ago. Those two games and this game, Jay, the only three times in the last 60 plus seasons that both have been unranked in this game. But you know what? If you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know any better walking in. This feels like every other Carolina Duke that we've always done, which means there's a lot on the line here tonight. Already, Derek Lively II has been a presence in this game with his shot blocking. He was rolling to the rim. They just couldn't complete the pass 
But with Lively in the game, Duke's field goal percentage defense at the rim is 15% better. He has three block shots already in this game. He averages two a game, and that's not in a ton of minutes. His play has really picked up the last few weeks, and we'll say it for the second time tonight, R.J. Davis looks like his normal self. Yeah, he's back. And that mid-range jump shot, because of the drop coverage that Duke plays, is going to be there all night. Unless there's an adjustment with a hard hedge or a flat head. Davis averaging 16, better than 16 points per game. One of three Tar Heels averaging better than 16 and 18 per game along with Love and Baycott. And Carolina able to play with their heels on the three-point line. They're not concerned with three-point shots. They want to protect the paint. Turnaround won't go for Kyle Filipowski, who comes in here on a tear with five double-doubles in his last six games. There's that middle ball screen and roll. Love into Baycott, and he got fouled. In the middle of the floor, it is so difficult to pick up Baycott as the roll man. He sets that screen and then immediately rolls to the basket. So if Derek Lively is going to try to impact the ball at all, he goes to it and stays with it too long. And because R.J. Davis adjusted up, you know, his man can't get in there and tag and get in front of Armando Baycott when he rolls. The middle of the floor, that middle third, is going to be where Carolina attacks with that ball screen. Baycott having another great season, averaging almost 18 points per game, better than 11 rebounds per game. Subs for Duke, including the grad transfer, Ryan Young, another Northwestern guy. So Pete Nance and Ryan Young team four years at Northwestern, and now they're on opposite sides of this rivalry. And Armando Baycott spends a lot of time right here at the free throw line. He shoots about eight free throws per game. And Carolina makes about 18 on average. So playing against North Carolina, you have to play good physical defense without fouling. Or they're going to spend a lot of time at the line. Proctor bringing it up for Duke. When Roach missed those four games with a toe injury, Proctor assumed more of the ball handling responsibilities. And now John Shire feels like he's got two equally capable quarterbacks out there on the court. Roach with a strong move, but he can't finish it. Young with the offensive rebound. And then Love is called for the travel. Boy, Ryan Young just has a knack for offensive rebounding. He reads where the ball's coming off, and if he doesn't have an immediate stick back, he looks to try to get it back out for an open three-point shot. Yeah, you always say about a guy like Young, he's not an above-the-rim guy, but boy, is he good below the rim. He is a terrific rebounder. R.J. Davis staying right with Jeremy Roach. He is not going to help off. Out of bounds, and it'll be Carolina ball, and Baycott shaking his head as if to say to Young, you can't do that to me. And one of the things North Carolina is doing on Tyrese Proctor, they're going underneath screens. They're not as concerned about him hitting a three. They want to make sure he stays out of the paint. A double drag up top, roll pop. Davis for three. Rebound, Leaky Black. And back comes Duke. Both teams missing some opportunities around the rim. Roach, yes. Well, Jeremy Roach has been aggressive in transition. And when Duke's been able to secure a defensive rebound, they've had a couple opportunities in transition to run. There's that zoom action, and Roach stand right with Caleb Love, taking away that handoff option. Davis turns the corner. Baycott lays it in. Armando Baycott so good at setting a ball screen wing or side and rolling right to the basket and presenting himself. You stay with the ball too long, and they just drop it off to him. Five field goals for Carolina, Jay. R.J. Davis has scored two of them and assisted on the other three. Grandison off to Young. Pretty two-man basketball. What a beautiful pass. Baycott had to step up to stop the Grandison drive, and a beautiful pocket pass to Ryan Young. That's beautiful basketball. Getting a little physical between Nance and Filipowski. Love with a sweet bounce pass and another bucket for Baycott. Right now, Carolina is able to attack the paint. And that's what Duke really wants to prevent. They want to protect the paint, make Carolina score over the top of them. And right now, Carolina has been able to turn corners. You turn corners, you draw help, and then play off it. Another touch for Young, defended by Baycott. Really good at pivoting. Grandison for three. 
Rebound Black. And North Carolina can close out short and be a little bit late to those shots. They just want to stop drives first and foremost. Baycott spinning on Young. Draws a crowd. Finds a wide open Nance. Young the rebound. Not going to get a better shot. Really good pass by Armando Baycott out of the double. Again, a long stretch without a whistle. And now as soon as we say that, we've got one. And a timeout on the floor. Carolina with a four-point lead midway through the first half. Jason. On ABC. Welcome to the film room with Duke head coach John Shire and coach we're, we're going to look at your offense here you're going to get Jeremy Roach into what you call floppy action where he's got a decision to make which side does he come out on and we give him the option here which way to go Mitchell clears out and when we can get him downhill that's best but still we do a great job when we have a chance to hit the post not just to score but also to make reads and get cuts and we call this a DL move right here where you know Ryan just goes right at Tyrese we get some good things th that can happen and then all the time we work on with our guards reading what the defender does here Hildreth goes under and this is an automatic shot for our guards so anytime we shoot we want our three fours and fives crashing the boards uh, Ryan Young gets the offensive rebound here if he doesn't have you want the immediate stick back if he has it but if he doesn't have it what do you want we want relocation threes and you know for us this has been a staple of Duke basketball for a long time you get this offensive rebound relocate and me and you were talking about it but the percentage that that our players shoot off an offensive rebound seems to be a much higher percentage from a normal three thanks to coach Shire that's the film room like the film room, you did this with Rick Barnes in Knoxville a couple of weeks ago. For Duke or for any team for that matter, Jay, how much of the offense are set plays and then how much are, hey, read and react to what you're seeing and go make a play? A little bit of both. Duke has a number of set plays on its menu. They like to get down in transition and just flow into offense, but they've got a number of sets that they run and then counters. Great shot fake by Filipowski. And that allowed him to get right into the paint to Jalen Washington, who made a great move on the other end. It's nice to see Washington back. When Armando Baycott got hurt against Virginia, went out of the game, Washington came in, and that shot fake just opened up the lane. But Washington came in, and he wound up having 13 points and six rebounds, was taking off, and then he injured his ankle again against Boston College. But he is a special talent. And you saw when he caught the ball on the other end, he just gives a little inside pivot to face up, and he can make that 15-foot jumper. And I think he's got the ability, maybe not this game tonight, but he's going to be able to stretch it out to three. Yep. Jalen Washington is a special talent, and he, he's going to be a ridiculously good player. Young out, lively back in. Filipowski at the line. The, he leads the team in scoring, rebounding, and steals. The seven-time ACC Rookie of the Week so far this season. And the only freshman in the country averaging better than 15 and 9 on the season. And you really have to sit on his right hand. He is a right driver first. He can go left, but you'd rather have him go left than right. Sneaky pass from Love into Nance, and a block is called on Filipowski. His first. Usually when Nance drives the ball, he likes to drive middle. And this time more to the baseline side, but a spin back to the middle. Lepowski to the bench Nance has scored 34 points in Carolina's last two games and Hubert Davis has talked to him about being aggressive and he said Nance was a little worried early about stepping on some toes this veteran group that made it all the way to the national championship game a year ago and Hubert keeps telling him there are no toes don't worry about the toes go be aggressive when he first got to North Carolina Hubert Davis told him hey man I want you to be a dude like don't defer just because you haven't been there I've been here and when Nance is aggressive, I mean, he can shoot it. He's not quite the Brady Manic shooter that's really going to stretch the floor and make seven threes in a game like Manic could in any given game. And he's not the rebounder that Manic was, but he's a good player. Carolina fans also happy to see Pop Johnson back in the game. That'll be a goaltending call on Lively. Johnson missing the last three with a knee injury. Count that basket for R.J. Davis, who's having himself a good first half. You can really tell how Carolina has been resolute to drive the ball. You know, they're putting Duke in positions where they're having to help and rotate. 
and Carolina can play out of it rather than settling for jump shots. And I think this is when Carolina looks the best is when they're aggressive getting into the paint. Proctor's soft touch on the floater to get Duke back within five. Tyrese Proctor has really changed this Duke team, taking over as the primary point guard. Last five games, he's averaging 12 points and four assists. He's an excellent defender. And he, he leads Duke in assists, and he's going to be a really good player. Boy, another good pass from Love, but another rejection for Lively. And Proctor down with the board. Duke has numbers. Grandison in transition. Count the basket and a foul. When Duke is able to grab a defensive rebound, they have gotten outlet passes, and they are running. Thus far, the transition advantage has gone Duke's way. An excellent pass ahead to Jacob Grandison. R.J. Davis not in position to take the charge, just got clipped on the side, and Grandison able to finish the play while he's on his back. And, Jay, that's a big call. That is number two on R.J. Davis with 8.45 to go in the half. He sits. Freshman Seth Trimble is into the game for the first time now for the Heels. Seth Trimble is a great driver, very athletic, and an outstanding on-ball defender, but he does not stretch the floor. He's only made one three on the season. So you're going to be able to help off of him and sag off of him. Washington baseline on Lively. Out of bounds off Roach. So Davis has to sit. Baycott is on the bench right now. So you wonder if Love feels, hey, I got to take it upon myself a little bit more to do the scoring or if they still have some other options out there. I'm not sure his mindset ever changes from I'm going to do some scoring. <laughs> He's a scoring guard. But the question is, what kind of shots will he take? And if he continues first and foremost to be a driver and then take the, the perimeter shots when they're there, I think Caleb Love is at his absolute best. You know, people talk about his shot selection, and, and that's fair, rightfully so. But how, how do you balance, you know, telling him to take shot, take his certain shots, but he can make difficult ones, yes. as evidenced by the Final Four last year when he made about as difficult a shot as you're going to make. Huge three in the last minute, three of the 28 he had to send Carolina into the championship game. It's feisty and it's fun so far here at Cameron. Proctor in his first game of this rivalry with a floater. Carolina up two on Duke. There are five. In Cameron, Coach K takes an L. Well, three, top of the key. Oh, he got it! And the heels end the career of the Hall of Fame coach, Mike Krzyzewski. Well, two moments that are certainly making Carolina fans smile right now as we take a look at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster. In the last 100 games, they're 50-50. In the last 111, Carolina is up by one, and that won the win of the national semifinal last night when that guy, Caleb Love, had 28. And once again, Jay, the third time he's come into this building in his career, and the third time he is playing well. Well, he's doing it a little bit differently in this game from some games he's played recently. Gets his shoulders and his torso past the defender. Jalen Blakes took the bump. And how much better is Caleb Love when he's aggressive getting into the paint? He's such a strong athletic guard. And he should be making a living at the free throw line. Five career games against the Blue Devils, better than 20 points per game for Love coming into this one. Good defensive matchup here with Seth Trimble guarding Jeremy Roach. He seems like Seth Trimble was born in a stance. So explosive and such a good on-ball defender. And he may get some good minutes here with R.J. Davis on the bench with two. Roach tries it again. Kicks to Grandison in the corner. Got to get a shot off. And a shot clock violation. It gives it back to Carolina. Give credit there to the freshman Seth Trimble. You know, we talked, he, he's not the offensive player yet that he can be. But defensively, you don't see many freshmen guard and guard the ball like Seth Trimble. And he'll bring it up to take Love off the ball, at least for now. Baycott has returned for the heels. Filipowski has returned for the Blue Devils. Another ball screen for Love and another good look. Puff Johnson for three. Boy, what a difference maker Puff Johnson can be because he can stretch the floor. He missed his last three games with a knee. 
He had 12 points against Louisville, 11 points against Notre Dame. He was a huge lift to North Carolina in the national championship game against Kansas. This gives them another offensive threat on the floor that you have to guard on the perimeter. Blake's being hounded by Love. Filipowski will answer with a three of his own. Well, Jalen Washington not used to guarding that far out on the floor. And it's almost like Filipowski either knew it or could feel it. Little horns action out top for North Carolina. Duke going under on Seth Trimble. They're going to invite him to shoot that three. Washington with a corner three. Mitchell the save, and he finds Blake's. Great play. Blake's still playing with that Batman mask. Broke his nose in practice January the 17th. He looks like a superhero. How much better are the masks now when you break your nose? <laughs> And Filipowski stepped out of bounds. North Carolina getting some ball screen action and then a great throwback on the shake action. Just terrific job and a terrific pass. And the nice little jab step just got Jalen Washington back up a bit. And Filipowski, he can really shoot it. Yep, Nance a little indecisive there between putting the ball down and passing it, and he ends up turning it over. Well, I don't think he expected Jeremy Roach to be in the passing lane. He got in between the ball and Seth Trimble, and that, as much as anything, caused the walk. Two coaches who played in this rivalry, each of them between their playing careers, being an assistant coach, and out tonight, has been in more than 30 Carolina Duke games. Rebound Nance. So John Shire, Hubert Davis know all about this rivalry. Thus far, North Carolina doing a pretty good job on the defensive glass. And Duke, statistically the second best offensive rebounding team in the nation, they get better than 38% of their misses. Good throwback. Wide open three. Filipowski, too strong. That's one area Duke has not been able to consistently knock down perimeter shots this season. Boy, what a bad pass. There was nowhere for Baycott to go once he caught it. Mitchell. Well, he went right into the chin of Puff Johnson. And he led into his chin. And just a strong drive by Mark Mitchell. Watch this here. Boom. Johnson got the worst of that. He's okay. Mitchell at the line for a couple, averaging about nine points, four rebounds per game. Good wing defender as each coach sends in a couple of subs. And for Hubert Davis, our first look at DeMarco Dunn, a 6'5 sophomore from Tucson, Arizona. You know, it's funny when that kind of thing happens, and who knows, they probably would have, wouldn't have called that anything. It would have just been a basketball play. But if you tough it out and just get up, the officials don't go to the monitor. You know, if you hold your yeah. jaw, maybe yeah. you got a chance they'll take a look at it. Yep. Carolina shooting 42%, Duke just 35%. Carolina leading by three. They're both seven and four in lead play. They are tied for sixth in the ACC. But again, the top two teams in the league, Clemson and Virginia, in the league standings, both lost today. So whoever wins this one, just one game out of the loss column and a game and a half out for the league lead. Dunn kept it alive, but it bounces free to Proctor. Going all the way. Another transition basket for Duke. When they get a defensive rebound, they have been shot out of a cannon. And Tyrese Proctor forced the Carolina defense to stop the ball. Nobody did. They were trailing him. And he winds up getting the easy transition bucket. And that's got the building rocking again here as Duke is back within one. Look at the difference in the fast break points. 13-0. Well, traditionally, you talk about Carolina's fast break. But Duke has been scoring most of its points in transition ahead of the Carolina defense. Done into the paint. Lost it. Got it back. Baycott the rebound. Might as well have been a pass. Baycott's such a great offensive rebounder. Remember, no R.J. Davis still on the bench with two. 
Long three for Love, and Duke can take the lead. And that's the kind of shot where you say, Caleb Love, what do you think in there? You know, he's had such success getting into the lane. He can make that shot, but at that point in the clock, it wasn't necessary. Roach. And yet another rebound for Baycott. That'll be his sixth. A drag screen in transition. Good throw. The pull up by Leaky Black is short. And that's not the shot that Carolina wants. Leads to a run out. Mitchell to Roach, and Duke has the lead. North Carolina's offense has not helped its defense. Some of the shots that the Tar Heels have been taking have led to runouts, where Duke is able to play ahead of the Carolina defense. And in the full court, fast break points, it has been all Duke in Cameron Indoor Stadium. You're in a hurry. I'm off to America's Best. I heard what you said about not overpaying for glasses. Two pairs and a free quality eye exam starting at just $79.95. The exam alone is worth... 59 bucks. I mean, people deserve breaks, right? Yeah, breaks. Book an exam today at americasbest.com. Okay, so with the award-winning Geico mobile app, our customers have 24-7 access, digital ID cards, they can even pay their bill. Bill has joined the call. Hey, Bill, we're just... Hi, start... guys, Bill here. Uh, do we have Julie on the line, too? Okay, hey, well, we'll, we'll, sorry, had you muted. Uh, well, yeah, let's. So uh, what let's I was just, thinking. Okay, well, we'll, we'll you, uh, so, um, right. let's just go ahead. The award-winning okay. Geico okay. app. Okay, we'll Download just... it today. We got the house. <laughs> <laughs> Pods handles the driving. Pack at your pace. Store your things until you're ready. Then we deliver to your new home, across town or across the country. Pods, your personal moving and storage team. Discover online privacy protection. We'll help remove your personal data from 10 popular people search websites. Because the thing about your personal information is that it should stay private. Online privacy protection. Free from Discover. Isn't that your car? That could have been bad. Wow. Hi, I'm Lauren. I lost 67 pounds on Golo. I got picked on as a child. It really got to me, so I tried everything there was. Golo and Release has definitely shown me that there is hope out there. All right, bring it in. It doesn't matter whether you're a player, a fan, a coach. Or an entire city. We all have a part to play in this game. This is your moment to show up, to show out. So come with that hunger. Bring that fire. Bring it all in, because now is the time. The XFL, coming February 18th. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Sonic Steak and Bacon Grilled Cheese for a limited time only at Sonic. Some of the scenes from college game day this morning here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Always a great venue for the morning show. The Jeep Halftime Report is coming up shortly. Holly will preview it with Seth and Fonz. Okay, Fonz, you like Derek Lively's impact so far in this game. What's he doing well? Well, I love what he's doing. He's blocking and altering shots. They've got to get Armando Breakout involved in offense, but they got to get him on the move. Derek Lively too tall for him to try to see straight over. That's right, just eight points for Armando. And Seth, what do you think they've got to do better to put for Carolina? What well, RJ Davis went out, shot selection obviously was impacted. And when the shot selection's impacted, your defensive transition is compromised. Duke's doing a great job of pushing off a of misses. And when Carolina gets in the lane, they're not covering the backcourt. They're getting crushed in defensive transition. All right, see you at the half, guys. Thank you, Holly. You saw R.J. Davis is back into the game. Jay sat for almost five minutes with those two fouls. Hubert Davis looking for, for a bit of a spark here towards the end of the first half. And R.J. Davis, three of six from the field when he went out. 
And he is such a good ball handler, passer. Good pass by Armando Baycott. And Black with a bucket. Baycott the assist. And that's one of the reasons Armando Baycott needs to touch the ball more. When North Carolina plays inside out, I think their offense much more effective. Derek Lively, by the way, with four blocks in the first half for Duke. Filipowski driving on Nance and a foul. Filipowski just went right into the chest of Pete Nance to draw that foul. And then Baycott looks middle to see if the double's coming. It wasn't. And just shot that pass right across court, right past the outstretched arms of Mark Mitchell for an easy basket for Leaky Black. Just a really good pass for Armando Baycott. But that's, I think that's the way North Carolina needs to, to play. Inside out, continue to attack the paint, draw help, and then kick it out to open shooters that can knock down a, an open shot or shot fake and, and drive the closeout. Lepowski, the freshman, one of 20 wooden late season candidates for the wooden award. There are four in the ACC. Armando Baycott is another one. The other two of the ACC, Isaiah Wong from Miami to Quavion Smith from NC State. And Filipowski has been so consistent at a high level. His last three, he's averaging over 21 a game, nine rebounds, shooting 50% from the floor. Black to the elbow, Nance kicks to Davis. And the weak side follow for Baycott for two more. But that was really good offense because Carolina got it from one side of the floor to the other. Made the defense move, and that's when Marmondo Baycott's even more difficult to box out. And look at the numbers, 10 and 7 already for Baycott. Filipowski getting more aggressive, but he can't finish it. Black from the corner. And it rattles out. Leaky Black started off the season shooting the three very well. 13 of his first 33, about 40%. Two for his last 20. Coming in as Proctor puts Duke back on top. Boy, Tyrese Proctor is really starting to blossom. He should still be in high school. Duke got him to come a year early out of Australia. He played at the NBA Academy. And he is a future NBA player. Good drive. And the finish for Black just blew right by Mitchell. Everybody was up near the free throw line. Carolina lifted up their offense, and there was no weak side help. And just a great drive by Leaky Black. You, know, you mentioned that two for 20. When he's that wide open in the corner, the corner's his spot. He still has to take that shot. Proctor again. What a game he's having. Boy, but his expression never changes, Jay. He looks like the, the coolest cat in the building. He's he? played a lot of high-level basketball in his young career. But he's really starting to come on. And that frees up Jeremy Roach. He doesn't have to take over ball handling responsibilities. And he can just think about scoring coming off screens. Baycott spins on Filipowski. And it goes. Two more for Armando Baycott. Anytime Armando Baycott gets the ball on the left block, he's going to look to spin toward the baseline. And then he spun back, and that's a difficult shot that he made. Baycott takes it away, and Carolina can take the lead in the final minute of the half. Or just a lazy pass. Baycott able to step in front and knock that away. A little horns action up top. They can throw back. Dunn getting some minutes. Love's been on the bench for a few minutes for Carolina. Nance with a step back blocked by Filipowski. And he got hit going up. And the officials didn't call it. Hubert Davis is incensed. And John Shire will use a timeout to try to set up for the final shot of a very entertaining first half. Giving your body what it needs can sometimes feel really complicated. But it doesn't have to be. We're Athletic Greens, here to make healthy habits beautifully easy for you. We design AG1 to give your body the support it needs every day. Combining the highest quality multivitamin, pre and probiotics, greens, and so much more. This is the future of foundational nutrition. One scoop, once a day. Learn more at athleticgreens.com.
Hubert Davis during the timeout was laying into one of the officials. Pete Nance going up for a shot. There's no question that as he, as he was coming up, he was fouled. And Hubert did not like it at all. And he wasn't alone on that Carolina bench. Well, that's about as angry as you will ever see Hubert Davis. And he is still talking with Bert Smith, one of the officials, about the non-call. Duke with a one-point lead and the ball with 21.8 seconds to go in the first half here at Cameron. Caleb Love has returned for Carolina. R.J. Davis sits. Remember, he's got the two fouls, so they don't want him in here right now on defense. Well, Proctor's had a nice half. Duke wants to go with about eight on the clock. That gives them an option for an offensive rebound, but not Carolina the chance to take it the other way. Proctor to Grandison. He'll get a good look at a three. And that'll do it in the first half here in Durham. And we have a foul called, I believe. Bert Smith has called a foul, and they're going to look and see if the foul was called before time expired. It really doesn't matter. They can look and see, but it's not free throws. Duke only had four team fouls. So it won't result in a one and one. So it would go on Roach if indeed it was called. But as Jay said, no free throws. It would just be a personal foul on Roach. But again, this theoretically, there might be some time put back on the clock. Maybe .2 or .3, but it won't be very much. Bird Smith and Roger Ayers looking it over. I still want to know, do our ratings go up with as much television as the officials watch in these games. You're just campaigning for more face time <laughs> for you. You always tell me ratings go up when they put you on camera. The money maker, baby. <laughs> well, I think we expected a close one, Jay, and we're getting a close one. These two teams, listen, Carolina was number one in the country preseason. Duke was number seven. You know, neither program has probably had the kind of uh, three months or so that they wanted to have, but there's a lot of upside for both of these teams going forward. No question. And, and for North Carolina at halftime, you know that they're going to be talking about defensive transition. And we mentioned earlier in the game, Carolina's, uh, this goes for both Duke and North Carolina, your offense has to help your defense. You, know, you take a bad shot, you're out of balance, and all of a sudden you allow a run out. And in the first half, it has been all Duke in transition. You know, the fast break point, 16 to nothing in favor of Duke. The foul is on Roach and two tenths of a second on the clock. The Carolina inbounds and now it's halftime with Duke leading by one, 33 to 32. Jeremy Roach leading the way for Duke with 10. Armando Baycott 12 and 7. At the break for Carolina, Holly Rose with John Shire. Well, Coach, a lot of your players are young in this rivalry, experiencing it for the first time. How do you like their composure and poise in the first half? Yeah, I love what they did. I thought it took us a few minutes. Between these two programs and the Blue Devils with a one-point lead on the Tar Heels. This R.J. Davis, Jeremy Roach matchup is a good one at the two guard spot. Proctor, another floater. This one, he leaves it a little bit short. And Carolina needs to do a better job of grabbing a defensive rebound and getting out in transition. You know, Leaky, Black uh, Leaky Black grabbed that rebound, but it was a slow break. Nance into Baycott. Spins around lively. And left it just a little bit short, but Leaky Black digs it out, but it'll be a held ball. The possession arrow will keep it with the heels. Tar Heel coach Hubert Davis had a chance to speak with Holly Rowe during halftime. Well, Coach, how did your commitment to the glass pay off in that first half, limiting their second chance opportunities? Well, I thought we
really good job of boxing them out. As I told you before, you know, they're the best in the conference at getting second chance opportunities. So for us, we got to limit them to one shot every possession. I thought we did a good job of that in the first half, and we'll have to do that in the second half. Fast break points. Most you've yeah, given up all year. Cool. How'd you I'll say cool. that to your kids? Well, you know, they've scored uh, half of their points off a of transition, and that's off of our turnovers and bad shots. So we clean up the turnovers and a bad shot and continue to try to attack the basket. We get to the free throw line more than anybody in the conference. We've only been to the free throw line three times. My hope is that'll change. Thanks, Coach. So, Jay, how does Carolina get to the line more in the second half? Continue to, continue to attack the paint. In the first half, especially Caleb Love, early in the first half, they did a good job of turning the corner off ball screens and getting into the paint, drawing help, and then playing out of it. But they can't just settle for jumpers. I mean, that by Pete Nance should have been a shot fake and a drive. You know, that was a settle over a seven-footer. Filipowski, eight points in the first half, now into double figures. Filipowski has got a ton of game. And when he adds in, he can play down in the post, but he can catch it a step off, face up, or he can turn around and shoot over you. He's a freshman playing against a fifth-year senior in Pete Nance. Nance for three. Too strong and a foul underneath going on Lively. It's Lively, yep. But Filipowski, because he can shoot it, he can catch it a couple steps off the lane. That was a good job by Pete Nance to push him off the lane. But Filipowski's got that shooting touch where that little 12-foot jumper is a really good shot for him. And Pete Nance just had his hands down, didn't discourage the shot. Bay caught a touch. And kicks it back out. Lively defending him well. Love fouled by Proctor. Proctor just got that left elbow right into the chest of Caleb Love. And then on the ball reversal, Love looking to drive it middle. And that puts a ton of pressure on the defense. Just a simple ball reversal gave a, a little fake to his left and then drove it right. And he is primarily a right driver. He can drive it either way, but he's much better driving to his right. Davis the kick. And the corner three for Leaky Black. That's his spot. If he's going to knock down a, a perimeter shot, it's going to be from the corner. But that was all because of the action in the middle of the floor that drew help. Proctor, boy, great pace. And he lays it in. Duke back on top. He just read the secondary defender, that being Armando Baycott. If Baycott steps up, he dishes it off. If not, he takes it all the way. He is showing more and more of his skill set week by week. Davis into the chest of Lively. That's the fifth block of the night for Lively. So long and athletic can take the bump and still block the shot. Mitchell leans in and finishes Duke by four. That's Mitchell's first basket. And he got it off the left hand drive into the middle. Leaky Black not playing his left hand to keep him out of the middle. The reverse won't go for Baycott. Boy, a quick move, but Lively bothered it. Lively beat him down the floor. Yeah, he might have altered as many as he's blocked tonight. Much more of a factor, Derek Lively the second, than he was in the first couple of months of the season. Well, he's healthy now, and he's a really good rim runner and an excellent shot blocker. Tough angle there for Roach, and it grazes the side of the backboard. Love baseline, floater, too strong. Just off one side of the floor. You know, Carolina never reversed the ball and put pressure on Duke's defense. Mitchell driving on Black. And it's down to the heels. Davis needs some help, and he finds love. Got the switch. Davis step back over Filipowski. And it's Duke ball. Derek Lively, the second, has been an impact player in protecting the rim. 
And Duke's rim protection defense with him in the game and over the last several games has been 15% better. Absorbed the bump, still blocked it with his left hand, and Mark Mitchell with the left hand drive, spinning back to the right and getting the bucket against Leaky Black. College basketball is brought to you by under $2 Craves from Sonic for a limited time only at Sonic. Our thanks to Tacoa Cartwright, who is manning the fan cam for us tonight. Favorite Cameron Indoor Stadium and Jacoa Cartwright is in as he's a freshman here at Duke and he wants to take your job one day and Jacoa why don't you come on up right now. It's a wonderful opportunity Jacoa to rest your voice with some of our verbose play by play professionals. If you can get a word in edgewise come on up. Dan Schulman Jay Billis Holly Rowe and the game day gang all with you here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The 260th meeting between Carolina and Duke, or 259th rather, meeting between Carolina and Duke. Carolina leading the all time series 143 to 115. I think Duke's got to look to Kyle Filipowski. Well, Roach got caught in the air and fortunate that he was able to kind of bounce it off Baycott out of bounds to retain possession as Puff Johnson comes into the game now for Pete Nance for the heels. And now Leaky Black is guarding Kyle Filipowski. And on the perimeter, that's a pretty good matchup for Black, but I think Filipowski can take him down into the post. It'll be Mitchell over Johnson, and Baycott holds off lively so that Davis can get the rebound. Duke switching exchanges between guards. Now that puts Roach on Caleb Love. Love the kick. Blacks hit 1-3 here in the second half. Not this time. And it's Duke ball. Proctor ahead. Filipowski. And yet another run out for Duke. After a defensive rebound, they are getting run out after run out. That's been the difference in the game. Largest lead of the night for the Blue Devils. Baycott spins lively. Got him again. And then Baycott had to get rid of it as he was falling out of bounds. It'll be Duke Ball. Derek Lively the second has been a presence around the rim. Blocking and changing shots. But after this shot by Leaky Black. The rebound bounces out and a great pass ahead to the sprinting Kyle Filipowski. Wait, Duke's transition offense has been stellar. Lively has not scored. He's only attempted one shot, but he's been about as impactful as anybody in the game with the six blocks. Davis with a burst of speed. Great look. Extra pass to the corner. Black for three. With the second three, and we talked about that corner. But North Carolina with a little bit of a push and the ball movement was excellent. Second assist of the night for Caleb Love. And Duke starting to spread the floor and even though Baycott is not coming out to guard lively. I think they have to look to Filipowski let him touch it. Instead it'll be Mitchell with an and one opportunity. Mark Mitchell. Shoots close to 40 percent from three. And he is a long athletic forward. That's a lefty. And this is a drive to his right. And Puff Johnson just catching him with the body and he finishes the play. But that's really good ball movement. The kick out after the penetration into the lane. And then finding a wide open leaky black in the corner. And a sub coming in now for John Shire. Ryan Young will take the place of Lively, who gets another huge ovation as he makes his way to the bench. And Ryan Young, an excellent offensive rebounder that just knows how to play. So you have to think that North Carolina is going to try to take advantage of the rim protection being on the bench. And let Armando Baycott touch it and go to work. Jay, the Tar Heels have just two made field goals in the second half. The two three-pointers from Leaky Black. Now you can add a three from Caleb Love. And Caleb Love needs to be aggressive. And he was left open. That was a rhythm three. And one that you want to see him take. It's the challenge threes after just one pass that put Carolina's transition defense in a problem. Boy, what a screen by Young. 
Roach too strong. Here's Davis. Give credit to Duke for getting back. It looked like Carolina might be able to take that a little bit quicker down the floor. Davis the drive. Cut off by the help defense. Grandison. Black had the three but hesitated. Johnson no. Long rebound to Proctor. And he turns it over. Johnson. Love. Baycott will finish. Carolina back within one. And that's the first transition basket for North Carolina. Off the bad pass by Tyrese Proctor. They deflected it and took it the other way. And timeout, John Shire and Duke. This has usually been a staple of North Carolina's offensive attack. Transition. Not a good decision by Tyrese Proctor. That lets North Carolina play ahead of the Duke defense. And an easy lob to Armando Baycott. And Cole Anthony now with the Orlando Magic. He knows a little bit about transition basketball. Joel Embiid of the Sixers at Madison Square Garden to take on the Knicks featuring former Blue Devil R.J. Bear. That game comes your way 6 o'clock Eastern time. We showed you Cole Anthony, a member now of the Orlando Magic. So he's teammates with a couple of former Blue Devils. Paulo Vancaro, Wendell Carter Jr. I would imagine there's uh, some pretty interesting maybe side bets going on, Jay, between the two former Blue Devils and the one former Tar Heel. There always is. <laughs> Boy, Ryan Young set some good screens. Proctor off the back of the iron and the rebound to R.J. Davis and Carolina can reclaim the lead. Boy, big battle between Baycott and Young down on the block. Love spins, hangs, and hits Carolina on top. He basically called for a clear out. But he scored that bucket in the paint. And he is so strong and athletic. The more he drives it, I think the better his the result. Ten points, four assists, one turnover tonight for Love. Off the fingertips of Young, but we got a foul called on Baycott. And a timeout on the floor in a one-point game, Jay, with Love having put the heels back on top. Well, I'm not sure any Tar Heel on this team has hit bigger shots in his young career than Caleb Love has. But when he is aggressive driving the ball, he is more than a handful. Got a little bit of contact and made the floater. Not that into saving. You have? Tispire can help you have fewer asthma attacks and breathe better. Tespire is an add-on treatment for people 12 and older. It is not a rescue medication. Don't take Tespire if you're allergic to it. Allergic reactions like rash or an eye allergy can happen. Don't stop your asthma treatments unless your doctor tells you to. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection or your asthma worsens. Sore throat, joint, and back pain may occur. Avoid live vaccines. No matter who you are, ask your asthma specialist about Tespire today. Well, it's a rivalry that's been going on forever as we've entered the 259th meeting for some of these freshmen on the Duke side. Obviously, the first time that they have played in this rivalry. But Derek Lively is playing well. Tyrese Proctor is playing well. And to no one's surprise, we got a good one. Carolina 45, Duke 44, midway through the second half. Roach creates a little space. Lively secures the rebound. Grandison hits the three. Boy, not just a great rebound by Derek Lively the second, but a next level thought to kick it out to Grandison for that three. He didn't have the immediate stick back and looked out for the wide open three. That's really good basketball by Derek Lively. Off balance shot by Caleb Love. Gives it back to Duke. The best time to shoot a three is after an offensive rebound. And Derek Lively, after setting the screen, nobody there to box him out. And he grabs this rebound and immediately looks out to Grandison for that wide open three. And the analytics prove it. There's no better time than after an offensive rebound. Every Tar Heel was in the lane thinking about taking it the other way, not thinking about playing more defense. Blue Devils turn it back over on a travel. R.J. Davis trying to find some space. Tough one, and it goes, and it's all tied up at 47. R.J. Davis has game. You mentioned his last two. He's been one of ten from three. 
He had 26 points against NC State. He can put points up in a hurry in a variety of ways and a good decision maker with the ball. 16 points per game and the number one free throw shooter in the ACC as well. Proctor, good defense by Pop Johnson. They pick and pop out of this or roll R.J. Davis right down to the rim. It'll have to be Roach. Wow, did he earn that one? Boy, what a tough shot by Jeremy Roach. He's right about at his average right now. 12 tonight, 12.2 per game on the season. Love, no. Every shot around the basket is contested. Filipowski bowls his way in. Baycott takes it away. Well, he had the advantage on Puff Johnson, but Baycott came over from the weak side. Boy, Davis tries lively again, and that is the seventh block of the night for Derek Lively, the second. Well, Davis had Baycott coming down the lane, but thought he could get the shot up over him. Leaky Black trying to pick up the foul. I thought it would be a drop off, but Grandison did a nice job of coming over and getting in front of Baycott to take that pass away. Step back, Davis. Tough shot and a three to put the heels back on top. It was so difficult to guard off that ball screen because he can step back, he can turn the corner. And they took away the roll from Baycott, but RJ Davis is starting to assert himself on the offensive end. Well, Filipowski might have gotten away with steps. Finds Roach. Just a little 5 4 ball screen to get Filipowski to his right hand. He just couldn't turn the corner. Baycott did a nice job with help defense and switching off. Boy, RJ Davis. Watch him come off this ball screen. And Roach trailing him. He just steps back and nails a difficult jumper. His form is so good. And at the other end of the floor, Roach just with a crafty play kind of stopped in. Force Davis to back into him and create the foul and lively with his first points of the night His 39th field goal of the season 31 of them have been dunks when Armando Baycott goes to block the shot That leaves the offensive glass wide open for lively nobody there to box him out Davis not this time Proctor comes out of the scrum and that's what you have to do. The guards have to get in and rebound. It can't just be the big guys on the defensive end. Hand off to Proctor. A battle underneath, and Love comes out of it. But we have a foul call going against Armando Baycott. Just his second. Well, Derek Lively's activity level has been high. He and Baycott going after that block shot. Just a little bit of a push there. A lot of people call that rebounding. Boy, with all the contact in this game, the big guys are going, really, on a rebound? Roach now guarded by Puff Johnson after the switch. Crossover. It hangs on the rim and comes down to Leaky Black. Boy, Leaky Black has done such a good job on the defensive glass. That's his eighth rebound of the night. Lively almost forces a turnover. It'll be out of bounds to Carolina with 7.35 to go in a game where the lead keeps switching back and forth. In the first game of the season between these two, the first time Derek Lively the second has ever played in this rivalry. And boy, is he having himself a night for the Blue Devils. Does that remind you a little bit of Mark Williams a couple years ago and how he blossomed toward the end of his freshman? Ball's going to keep rolling on into the evening. Florida and Kentucky are coming up next. Joe Lenardi's got Florida first four out. Kentucky last four in. So obvious implications. And then Upper Gonzaga and St. Mary's capping off the day. Oscar Shibwe, 13.6 rebounds per game. Always fun with the Gators and the Cats get together. And how about Gonzaga and St. Mary's? Randy Bennett's got himself a heck of a team. They are the leaders right now in the West Coast Conference. They are undefeated in conference play. That's a big game out west tonight. St. Mary's has a top five defense going against a top five offense in the country against Gonzaga. Gonzaga averaged 86 points a game.
And the, the question is against St. Mary's with the way they control tempo and the way they defend, you know, can Gonzaga score over 70? Freshman Aiden Mahaney, the leading scorer for the Gales. St. Mary's having a terrific year. Those two will meet uh, a few weeks from now back in Spokane in the rematch. Davis from the corner, around and out, and a rebound down to Lidwick. Really good action by North Carolina. That little fade screen to get a shooter open in the left corner just didn't make it. Filipowski, nice pass, Lively. Almost turned it over, but it bounces to Proctor. And a foul will send Filipowski to the free throw line. Boy, loose ball. It looked like Caleb Love had an angle to that 50-50 ball to take it the other way, but Proctor got it. And that's one that when Hubert Davis and his staff watch the film, they'll say that's a ball that Caleb Love should have had. But Carolina shoot, makes 18 free throws a game. I mean, they barely got into the free throw line in this one. Two for three on the night. Usually they're wearing a hole in that nail yep. at the free throw line. And they've barely been there. Boy, has this guy become a fan favorite in a hurry? And Kyle Filipowski, if, if you're doing a the top five freshman, kind of a first team All America freshman team, pretty good chance this guy's on it. Oh, no, he's on it. Yeah, Brandon Miller's leading the way from Alabama, but Kyle Filipowski is second. Interesting stretch for the Blue Devils after this one tonight at Miami on ESPN a Monday night at Virginia next Saturday on ESPN as well. Tough stretch for the Blue Devils. Miami picking up a big win over Clemson earlier today. Well, Duke doing a good job in negotiating these screens out front. That's a tough shot over a seven footer. Mickey Black down with the rebound off the miss from Love. Right now with Armando Baycott out of the game, it's got to be R.J. Davis here. Got a switch, driving on Filipowski. Whips a pass into the corner, and it's the third three of the second half for Leaky Black. R.J. Davis got a switch, and he was going against Filipowski and just drove him into the lane. And because they helped off of Leaky Black, they wanted him to take that three. If anybody's going to take it, they'd rather have Leaky Black take it. He's nailed three of them in this game. Black with 13 points, nine rebounds on the night. Shot clock at four. Roach knows it. Gets to the free throw line. And it nestles in to give Duke a two-point lead. A really patient use of the ball screen. Got R.J. Davis on his hip. That was a huge bucket after that leaky black three. Baseline low and the reverse as he slithers through a couple of defenders to tie it up. Boy, how about that step through he made past Mark Mitchell to get to the other side of the basket and use some English to get the bucket. That was a terrific drive by Caleb Love. Last 100 meetings. Each team has won 50 of them, and they're all squared up with five minutes to go here in this one. A little slice cut screen for the screener, well defended by North Carolina, and then an illegal screen off the pitch as Mark Mitchell went right into the body of R.J. Davis. With Caleb Love here, this is a pretty good patience by North Carolina. He was able to refuse that screen, and Tyrese Proctor has to make him use it, and that opened up a lane to the basket. And here's the switch. Kyle Filipowski guarding Davis. Davis crosses over, and then Mark Mitchell has to help off of Leaky Black. And when he does, wide open shot for Leaky Black. Love, deep one over Proctor, off the back of the iron, long rebound to Black. Johnson from the corner misses the three. Not the shot. Yeah, after getting the offensive rebound, yeah, North Carolina needed to reset that. That was not the shot they wanted. Roach. Goes, and he's fouled. Well, Jeremy Roach has been terrific at driving angles. 
But he watched the feet of his defender, went under. R.J. Davis went under. He was able to turn the corner. And the difference in driving east-west and north-south. You drive north-south, you make the defense help, and you have an opportunity for a three-point play. Let's go to Holly. Well, yesterday to end practice, John Shire grabbed the guys, pulled them around in a circle, and as he's speaking, Kerwin, or excuse me, Jeremy Roach spoke up and said, listen, guys, you don't know what kind of physicality you're in for. When we played in this game last year, we weren't ready. Now you see they are. This is what Roach was telling his teammates they needed to bring, and he was right. His leadership has been standing out for Duke tonight on the floor. Holly, thank you, and what a play at the other end of the court off the drive by Love had it rejected and Filipowski is still down for the Blue Devils but Caleb Love took that with the right hand and he was going to punch it but he was facing basically two seven footers trying to block that shot and this is a strong take and Derek Lively just sends it out but Kyle Filipowski still down Yeah, lively the rejection and it looked like Filipowski reached for his left elbow momentarily when he hit the court. There's the eighth block of the night for Lively. And Filipowski now at least sitting up on the court. Well, shot blocking has now been referred to as rim protection but that's incredible rim protection by Derek Lively the second. What an impact he has been in the lane. Filipowski on his feet. Timeout on the floor. Two point game at Cameron. The pepperoni on Panera's new toasted. John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. In a game that has seen eight ties and five lead changes, it's Duke by two here to Cameron over their rivals from Chapel Hill with 4.09 to go in regulation. And one, of the, ball. and one of the biggest differences in this basketball game has been the play of Derek Lively the second inside. He's got eight block shots and 11 rebounds. Nance behind the back trying to back down Mitchell. Turn around, fade away is good, and Carolina ties it. First points of the night for Pete Nance. Just a, a really good one-on-one -on -one move where he pivoted and fell away with that jumper. Roach has it knocked away. Nance wide open. Misses the three and lively down with his 12th rebound of the night. And that was a good opportunistic three in transition for North Carolina. Nance just wasn't able to knock it down. And Carolina's been letting Jeremy Roach get to his right hand. Randison, that's a tough pass at the feet of Lively. And the question is, what was he going to do with it when he caught it? He gives it to Proctor. And just kind of a disjointed possession there for the Blue Devils. 3.04 to go. It'll be Carolina ball, but the ovation you hear is for the return of Kyle Filipowski. That gives Duke another seven-footer to go along with Derek Lively, the second. But you have to think that North Carolina wants to get a touch for Armando Baycott. He's got 14 points, 10 rebounds, but he hasn't touched the ball much lately. Nance passes up the three, dribbles it into traffic, but is fouled. Just got a step on Filipowski, and Filipowski's got very good hands, reached in and knocked the ball away, but got the foul called on him. Wasn't in legal guarding position, had his elbow on the back, that arm bar on the back. That's where I'm, maybe the foul's called. I mean, you're not supposed to have an arm bar on the driver, period. Fourth team foul. On the Blue Devils, now the Duke bench wanted a, a foul on Nance. Instead, it's a turnover. And Nance commits the foul. That'll be the seventh on Carolina, so Duke will be heading to the line for one and one. Duke has shot up till now 12 free throws in the game. Carolina only three. 
I can't, I can't recall a Duke Carolina game where the Tar Heels have been to the free throw line so seldom. Filipowski, one and one, 77% from the line on the season. And who's it off of? It is Carolina ball, ruled off of Lively. John Shire voices his disapproval. Can't look at that unless you're inside two minutes. Davis around Proctor. Proctor recovered and got a piece of it. Looked like Lively was there to bother it as well. Well, you use the term rim protection. Duke's got a lot of that this season, don't they? Well, Lively is, is a game changer for Duke. And there is nothing going on around the basket for North Carolina because of the presence of Derek Lively the second. Filipowski guarded by Baycott. Gets the shot off. Rebound Lively. He did it again. What is that rebound number 13 for him? It is. What a game for, by Derek Lively the second. And a game where Duke needed his presence. Roach defended by Nance goes by him. And Lively the follow. Derek Lively the second. Duke by two. It's time to bring balance to business travel and discover the equilibrium that works for you. At National, you're in control. Skip the counter, choose any car in the aisle, and manage your rental right from the app. So you can mix work with leisure or leisure with work, giving you the control to find the perfect balance. Go national, go like a pro. As Duke gets the drive to the basket, it draws help. This drive to the basket here is gonna draw help and keep an eye here on Derek Lively the second. Now when Armando Baycott right under the basket comes over to block the shot, what you're going to see is the glass is wide open for Derek Lively the second to get that stick back. You go to block a shot, there's no rotation over to pick up Lively. And he gets another rebound and a huge bucket to put Duke up 59-57. His presence in this game has been game changing for Duke and he is starting to blossom. The number one high school player ranked last year and he was injured to start the season, didn't have that much continuity going through the early season, and had to listen to people questioning his ability and whether he should have been ranked number one, as if it makes a difference whether he's one, five, seven, whatever. But he is starting to really blossom and come on. And he's a big reason why Duke carries a two-point lead into la this last minute and a half of regulation. A season-high 14 rebounds. Previous high was 10. A season-high eight blocks. Previous high was five. The most anybody has ever had for Duke in a game against Carolina. The program record for blocks against anybody is 10. Held by Sheldon Williams and Cherokee Parks. 14 rebounds and eight blocks tonight. For Derek Lively, the second. Let's see what the response is from the Tar Heels. Cherokee Parks in attendance tonight. The Chief. Davis to Love. One on one with Proctor. Got the switch. Got Filipowski on him. Will he drive it or pull up? Spins. Gets it back. Finds Black wide open in the corner. Boy, he's made three of them already here in the second half, but not this time as we go into the final minute. Well, Duke choosing to protect the paint and recover late, if at all, to Leaky Black. And he's nailed three of them, but that one, short. Filipowski sizing up Nance. Drives on him. 
Can't get it to go, but he got it back. Lively occupied Armando Baycott, and he couldn't get there. And a timeout with 35.3. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free. Armando Baycott and Derek Lively right under the basket when this shot is missed. Baycott trying to box out Lively and just couldn't get to that ball. Derek Lively the second. He has had some good games, especially in the last three or four. But this has been next level. His ability to protect the rim, his rebounding, running the floor. Talk about an impact player that makes Duke a different team than they have been earlier in the season. And that's the look of a young man having his best game of the year. Five of the 14 rebounds at the offensive end. He's kicked some back out for buckets, eight blocks. As we mentioned, he's only had two field goals. One of them was one of the biggest shots of the night. But again, he has been as impactful as any player in the game tonight. But his activity level has been really outstanding. And he's played more minutes, perhaps, in this one than he's played all season long. And to your point, Ryan Young, who usually plays a fair number of minutes, he's only played six minutes off the bench tonight because Lively's been so good, you can't take him out of there. He's played 33 minutes. Carolina beat Duke here last year, then beat him in the national semifinals. Carolina's won two in a row in this building. This young Duke team, four freshmen are getting significant minutes trying to end that streak right now. 16 seconds remain on the shot clock for Duke. A little over 35 seconds remain in regulation. North Carolina does not have to foul here, but they have to have a good defensive possession and get a stop. Grandison to inbounded for the Blue Devils. Proctor with the ball. Roach the drive. Left hand and it's good. Filipowski went to set a screen. He just ghosted out of it and that opened up Jeremy Roach with that right hand drive into the lane. Really good call out of the timeout by John Shire to essentially isolate Jeremy Roach. You thought it was going to be a ball screen, but Filipowski just ghosted out by not setting the screen at all. Passes and watch he just slips out of it. And that opened up that drive for Jeremy Roach. Nobody there to step in either to take the charge or try to block the shot. If Armando Baycott comes over, it's a dump off to Derek Lively or an offensive rebound bucket. Roach now with a game high 18 and 51 points, Jay, in his last three games. It seems with Proctor doing more of the, the ball handling, Roach turning into more of a scorer right now for the Blue Devils. Yeah, that's freed him up. Proctor taking over the ball handling responsibilities has freed up Jeremy Roach to be more of an offensive weapon. And he moves well without the ball, but now he doesn't have to run everything and then look for his offense. Remember, missed four games with a toe injury and even played at less than 100% for a few games as well. They really missed him. He is back. He certainly appears to be healthy. And he has had a terrific night for Duke with a now a four point lead with 20.9 to go. And there's still plenty of time for North Carolina. They don't have to take a three here. They're down two possessions, 61 57. But you still think attack the basket. If they kick it out for an open three, that's one thing. And the foul by Proctor. Duke had two fouls to give. They still have one more. I think they want to wait a little bit longer. You don't need to foul that far away from the basket. Let a couple more seconds go if you can. And Filipowski with a foul. So that's number six on the Blue Devils here in the second half. And now the bench all yelling now to the five guys on the court. That's it. 
And because of where the foul was committed, now it's out of bounds on the baseline. And Duke wants to get everything going toward the short side of the floor, toward the ball side. Baycott the kick. Nance for three. The rebound down to Roach. And they can feel it now here at Cameron. North Carolina couldn't ask for a better shot. The kick out from the post touch and a straight on three from Pete Nance. They couldn't have asked for anything better. Already a two possession game as Roach steps to the line and adds to the lead. Roach coming off a 21 point performance against Wake Forest and about to hit the 20 point mark again. Got him both. Now you have to have a three. Love. And a travel called on Proctor, but just four tenths of a second left. And the Blue Devils are going to beat the Tar Heels, move ahead of them in the ACC standings, and pick up a very popular win here in this building. And what a growth moment for a young basketball team. The freshmen played well, didn't they? And obviously Jeremy Roach helped a ton as well. A big win for John Shire and the Blue Je and the Blue Devils in their fr Shire's first game here in this Duke Carolina rivalry as the head coach. It was back and forth all night long until Duke salted it away, Jay, in the last couple of minutes, and it makes you look forward.